cultural turn in translation studies. Introduction The cultural turn in translation studies conceived of translation as a tool to uncover asymmetrical power relations between the two cultures it negotiated. An agent that plays a significant role in charting out the cultural histories of nations and people. The critical role of ideology, poetics and universe of discourse in the way translations are commissioned, executed and published came under critical scanner and it threw up interesting insights as to the modes and terms of cultural collisions, transactions and dialogue. Andre Lefebvre, one of the major translation scholars who linked translation with cultural studies, said that literature is a subsystem of the cultural semiotic system. Literature is correlated with other cultural systems and embedded in ideological and socio-economic structures of society. Hermans, 1985. Translations are produced under ideological and poetological constraints. Turi, a rational for descriptive translation studies, 1985. Translation theory should describe the strategy devised by the translator to deal with these constraints. Lefebvre's concept of refractions. In an attempt to substantiate the relation of power and authority between the source culture and target culture, Andre Lefebvre propounds his most influential theory of refractions and patronage. Refraction is the blanket term used by him to cover literary activities like criticism, translation, anthologization, the writing of literary history and the editing of texts. In fact, all those aspects of literary studies which establish and validate the value structures of canons. He remarks, refractions are made to influence the way in which readers read a text as such, they are powerful instruments in ensuring the right reading of works of literature and in perpetuating right reading. Lefebvre says that the control factor in the literary system checks it from falling too far out of step with other systems like law, physics, etc., which collectively form civilization or society and cleverly adds that this control factor functions from outside as well as from inside of the system. The factor within the system is that of dominant poetics, which can be said to consist of two components. One is an inventory of literary devices, genres, motives, prototypical characters and situations, symbols. The other, a concept of what the role of literature is or should be in the society at large. In this context, translations play a vital part in the evolution of literatures, not only by introducing new texts, authors and devices, but also by introducing them in a certain way as part of a wider design to try to influence that evolution. The second regulatory mechanism is patronage, represented by groups or persons such as a religious grouping or a political party, a royal court, publishers and the media. Patronage consists of at least three components. An ideological one which establishes what is ideologically acceptable in the literary system and in the world at large. An economic one which assures the livelihood of the writers and refractors. A status component which provides writers and refractors with a certain position in society. Multilingualism and politics of translation in India. It would be sheer tautology to say that linguistic situation in India is very complex. While the state categorizes 114 languages into narrow categories like scheduled 22 languages and non-scheduled People Linguistic Survey of India being prepared by Bhasha Research and Publication Center, Vadodara classifies Indian languages into classical, Adivasi, nomadic, scheduled and non-scheduled, diasporic, code and multilingual space categories. Of the 22 scheduled languages, some represent linguistic states, that is Gujarati, since it is the only language spoken by the people of a particular geographical area. 
However, within Gujarat, the people using mainstream Gujarati are far lesser than people who use some form of dialectal Gujarati. Thus, when it comes to receiving institutional support for dissemination of language through academics and print, it's only the mainstream Gujarati which gets patronized. Amidst the hierarchy and inequality within Indian languages, the acceptance of English as associate official language and a link language has served to further complicate the matters. Post-globalization, the local has failed to resist the pressures of cultural convergence and has finally chosen to undertake assimilation. Linguistic assimilation is just one but extremely important example as it's closely associated with professional aspirations. Needless to say that linguistic assimilation inevitably precipitates cultural assimilation. In his insightful article in India, The Paradox of Choice in a Globalized Culture, Anand Giridharda says, English has become something more in India than a pathway out of poverty. It has become as it is not in Brazil or China, the language of respect. An Indian who speaks only Indian languages will face inferior treatment in her own society. 2008 Regional Literatures and Translation Resultantly, there are a great number of people who use English instead of Hindi over and above their mother tongue for variety of purposes. Kothari 2003 these developments have made Indian populace increasingly bilingual, a fact which has significant implications for translation. Today, writers in regional languages prefer to get their works translated in English rather than in Hindi or other regional languages because English furnished them an international platform. Regional literatures look upon English as their saviour rather than adversary. To sum, this shift in the mutual relationship which was frayed in late 19th and early 20th century is an index of neo-colonial processes overtaking Indian literatures. To others, it is just a politics of post-colonial agenda whereby English is appropriated and abrogated to express experiences that are Indian in colour and blood. To a certain extent, this reversal of fortunes has been testified in the vigorous translation of regional literatures into English since 1980s. However, the battle of Indian literature in English translation is waged on two fronts. It has to uncover and disseminate rich local knowledge systems, oral traditions and indigenous narratives that were shadowed by Sanskrit and Persian in colonial era. It has to fight the hegemony of Indian literature written in English, which has been quite handsomely recognized abroad as an independent body of literature and area of academic research.